Hello everyone. I just wanted to get on here today and share with you some insights that I'm having about how to overcome adversity and how to handle this particular moment in time that we are experiencing collectively, globally. This is something that is affecting not just anyone in any particular city, of any particular segment of society, it is a global phenomena. So I want to tell you first one, one thing that you really need to have at the forefront of your mind is that you are part of the most strongest selection of your genetic gene pool or you wouldn't be here. Because of all the ancestors that you've had, you know, you come from really great stock. For you to be alive and well and to be here right now, you had to go through incredible amounts of adversity in order to be here right now. What our parents went through, what our grandparents went through, oh my gosh, what our grandparents went through, what our great grandparents went through, let alone any of our ancestors prior to that. You know, it's no wonder that they had to have 10, 15, 20 kids uh, because only a fraction of those would survive. So only the strongest survived. So the very fact that you are here right now, alive, watching this video, tells me that you are the cream of the crop. Now I wanna share with you guys um, some insights that I'm having also with regards to this adversity because although we've never experienced anything like this before, we have all faced challenges that were first for us that we hadn't experienced before and those are now all in our past and right now we have this present moment and we can choose to react and freak out and focus and obsess on the news and whatever it programming they want to put in your head or you can choose to take your focus attention and energy and put it on something else that will uplift, inspire, encourage, and motivate you. Uh, for those of you who are meditators, I don't care what your religion is, but if you meditate in any way, shape, or form, if you have ever called yourself a prayer warrior, if you have ever been involved in spiritual warfare, if you've involved yourself or been um, a participant guide or practitioner of energy medicine, any kind of healing modality, this message is especially important to you, in my opinion. And for those of you who are not, pay close attention because I think this is going to resonate with you also. Um, first of all, your energy is going to flow wherever your focus and awareness goes. That is not just physics 101, biology 101, but that is also a very spiritual principle. Uh, you know, I remember, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna put my clerical collar on, I guess, because <laughs> I am a preacher's kid, so that's my first confession. My second confession is that I was raised in a very uh, Judeo-Christian household, my father having been uh, an ordained Presbyterian, you know, minister. I come from a Judeo-Christian background, having grandparents who are, you know, Jews and Christians alike, okay? So I have always been um, brought up to be spiritually sensitive and acknowledging, you know, a higher power. And I really don't care about religion. This is not a religious post. This is purely, I want to share from a place of love, and I want, I want everybody to feel the joy and the love that I'm experiencing right now. And you can have this right now in the midst of all the craziness that's going on. And it's possible. And so um, let me share this with you. One of the things that, uh, that I, I recently experienced, recently I'm going to say in the last year because it was almost, not quite 12 months ago, but it was last June. And when I was in a monastery in Cancun, <laughs> had I probably known that there was going to be this challenge, nobody wants to sign up for adversity, problems, challenges, things to overcome. But let's face it, if you are on this side of the greens, as they say, or as the saying goes, you're doing pretty good. 
because you're not seven feet under, six feet under, however many feet it is, six feet, seven feet under. You don't have anybody throwing dirt on your head. So what does that mean? That means that you're alive. And as long as you're alive with this temporary meat suit that was issued at birth, you're good. And you can change, morph, transmute, whatever language you want to use, but you can, like a butterfly, goes from a caterpillar into a butterfly. You can change what's going around you, and despite it, you could turn it from lemon juice into lemonade. So back to my story about what happened in Cancun in the monastery. So I signed up for this seven day advanced training. I was excited about being in this monastery with a thousand other mystics from all over the world. Um, little did I know, I was ignorant of the fact that there is a pretty big challenge that you, they put you through while you're there. I don't know what I was thinking. I was focusing just on the med meditative aspect, but one of the things that that challenge did for me was it, it forced me in the midst of an adversity that was designed by them or by him to overcome what seemed like an impossible situation with impossible odds with great risk of injury to myself. So, um, you know, one of the things is I've always had a little bit of a fear of heights. And even though I've overcome it over the years where, you know, I, I, I was able to go snow skiing and get on a lift and go great heights, there's still always some sort of trepidation there. So <laughs> this adversity, you know, I always say the divine God has a very funny sense of humor. And so the joke was on me because the <laughs> adversity that they placed before us was a 50, not 10, not 20, not 30, but a 50 foot bright yellow I-beam. That was probably, if I had to guess, it was probably three and a half inches wide, maybe. And we had to climb all the way up and then we had to walk all the way across this I-beam. And so along with everybody else, we were like, OMG and going, this is, this is crazy. This is absolutely nuts. This is unreasonable. How are we going to do this? And I just remembered in my mind saying to myself, I don't know if I can do this. I'm like, wait a minute. What do you mean? I can't do this. You know, we, and, and, and then to boot, you know, of a thousand people, they broke us into smaller groups of 60. So of the, I don't know how many groups there were total, but in my group of 60, of course they picked my group to be the first group to go up, up, which probably is just as well because then I didn't hear any rumors from anybody else talking about the challenge. So I always look at the positive side of things. The down part of it was that I didn't have the benefit of having three, four, five days of the training and meditation to overcome this obstacle, but I did have a day worth of training, which is almost 14 and a half hours worth of meditation, training and practice and so forth. So needless to say, they inform us, Dr. Joe informs us day two, oh, by the way, you know, we're gonna have the challenge uh, course, you're gonna go through that today, and you know, we're gonna start with, you know, and they mentioned the name of my group, which is irrelevant at this point. So I'm like, oh my gosh, so ours is the first one. I'm like, challenge course. I had no idea that there was even gonna be a challenge course. That's no different than this coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever it is. Nobody told us that this was going to happen to us. It was just sprung on us. And when we got the news, we got the news. So part of the training is that, you know, yes, you feel the emotion of whatever it is that you're having in the moment of any unwanted situation. And the key is not to deny, suppress, and repress that negative emotion. It's to transmute. He doesn't use the language of transmute. I am using the language of transmute. You are going to morph. You're going to change. You are going to convert that energy that has to still go somewhere, and you're going to turn it into a positive energy to move you forward so that instead of it draining energy from you and taking away, it's like a thief that's taking away from you, you're going to use that now to catapult you up in the midst of adversity so that you can morph this thing around and realize an outcome that you want. So 
here I am, I'm trying to motivate, inspire, encourage my teammates that are around me. Some of, some of them are freaking out visibly and outwardly. They're already starting to shake before they even start to get up the ladder. I wasn't quite, I wasn't at that point yet, but I was going, I was going, oh my gosh, no. Oh yeah, God, this is it. I got this. I'm going to do this. I can do all things. I can do this. I'm designed for this. I don't know how, but I'm going to do this. And then um, one of my friends who I met there, um, Katie, who just happened to be, you know, she's somebody I can see eye to eye because we're, we're both five foot one. She's my blonde version, East Coaster girlfriend. And so I'm like, Katie, oh my gosh, check this out. It's like, you know, we have an advantage from, you know, again, I'm always trying to look at the positive and what things I have in advantage to somebody else. So Katie and I are petite. So I told her, oh my gosh, we are so lucky. We're so much luckier than everybody else. Cause look, everybody else is six inches to 12 inches taller than us. Everybody weighs 30, 50, a hundred pounds more than us. You know, especially men, men weigh probably, I don't know, my guess is most maybe 280 to maybe 250 pounds would be my guess. And her and I soaking wet, we're not even 105 pounds. So I'm looking, that means that when we get up there, we can tiptoe across light like a little bird. That eye beam is not going to shake the way it shakes. Oh my gosh. It shakes a little bit with big guys because they're big guys. There's a lot of weight that that eye beam has to support. So long story short, um, I went up, of course, as luck would have it, I was like one of the first people that was sent up. So I start to go up and I'm just brainwashing myself, telling myself, I got this, I can do this. And then as I'm, as I'm, you know, it's kind of duplicitous thinking because as I'm doing this, you know, I'm a human just like you guys. So I have the internal ego chatter who's trying to keep me safe. What are you thinking? Are you crazy? You can't do this. It's like, you don't have any, it's like, I don't care what they told you. There's no way you're gonna make it across this beam. And I'm going, shut up. I'm telling my ego, who is not my amigo, my ego actually is my enemigo in this case. I said, shut up. I said, brain, I am the master, you're the servant, shut up. You do as I say, you shut that ego up, I need all of my energy. I'm talking every cell, every fiber of my body. I need to focus right now because I don't know how I'm going to get across that eye beam I don't even know how I'm going to get from the top of these stairs because as I was going up the stairs, the stir stairs were not the ladder. The ladder was not even at a little bit of an incline. It was straight up. So it's like you really had to hold on so that you could, you didn't even have the benefit of gravity like leaning against a little bit. No, it was a, a ladder that was straight up. And then once you got to the top of the ladder, there was this, I think it was like two by two, like two feet by two feet. So then when you get to the top of the stairs, it's, it's not a stair, they were ladders. So when you got to the top of the ladder, you literally have this four by or two by two. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to get up there and not fall off? And I'm thinking, and I'm the lucky one because I'm little. The surface area that my body takes is so much less than a man or anybody else that was in the group. Katie and I, I don't know how, I don't know what the percentages were, but definitely I was in the top or bottom 2%, I'm going to say bottom 2% of the smallest people there. So I'm going, oh my gosh. So I managed to go on this two by two and I'm doing a Facebook live. So I managed to get on top of this two by two and, um, and I'm starting to get kind of nervous. And as I'm starting to get um, kind of nervous, and I and I, I kid you not, it's like I was really ma really managing my energy and my emotions as I was going up the ladder. So I finally get up on the ladder, on um, and on the two by two platform, there's a pole, and then of course you have the I beam that goes all the way. Yeah, there's an I beam that goes. That's my dog. There's an I beam that goes all the way across to the other uh, two by two that's on the other side, and then there was. Um, a wire that was at the top of the pole, which is what my, the harness that was on me, I was attached, it was gonna be attached to it, which I was attached as I climbed up. So I get up there and now it's like total brainwash. And 
as I'm saying, I can do this, I got this, I just have to slow my heart rate down, slow my breath down, slow my brain waves, I need to get into theta, and I got this. The, the thing was that all of a sudden, even though my mind was occupied with being in this meditative state, my body, out of the blue, betrays me and my leg leg or legs, I don't remember if it was one or both, but my legs start to shake uncontrollably. So as my legs are starting to shake uncontrollably, I'm going, what the, what the heck? How is this possible? I'm like, how can you betray me? I'm like, no. And in my mind, I was thinking, I'm not nervous. Well, obviously my body was speaking a different story, even though I was really, you know, with my will, managing my emotions, my body, legs were starting to shake and I said, wait a minute. And again, I commanded my brain and I said, brain, stop. You, you can't be wasting my energy on, la on, on shaking my legs. I need all of this energy so I have laser-like focus to get across this eye beam because this is the goal. I need to walk across, I don't know how I'm gonna do this, um, but I'm gonna walk across to the other side of the eye beam. So I gave the command, I assumed that the orders were in, done. Now my focus was back on walking across the I-beam. So as I walked across the I-beam, I remembered, I have great balance. I'm great at riding bikes, skateboards, ice skating, rollerblading, roller skating. I have good balance. I'm like, okay. So I, because I have good balance, again, I'm taking inventory of all the pluses, the things I have in my favor, which is what I'm suggesting that you all do too. So I can do this, I have good balance. As I looked at the I-beam, I realized I cannot take a step until I'm solid. I noticed on the other side of the two by two, by two there was a guy named Tomas, much taller than I, about 6'1 or 6'2", um, and he was walking slowly and steadily at a very even pace, coming to the destination where I was going to be going. And I noticed how steady and solid he was with each step that he took. As he took each step, I noticed that the width of the eye beam was less than the width of his shoes. And I immediately thought another plus, my feet are much smaller. So, when I, when I looked at my feet and I looked at the I-beam, that bright yellow band was the same exact width as my shoes. And I thought, huh, that's kind of funny because when I walk down on cement or grass, really, I don't need all of that to be around me to support where I walk. I just need the surface area under my shoe. So I thought, this is perfect. Every step that I take, I have more than enough surface area to support me and I have great balance. So I did not take off right away when I got on that two by two. I took my time, I took a deep breath, and when I felt solid, I started to take the first step. And it wasn't until I felt solid in that step that then I took another step. And with that slow, steady process, I didn't let anybody or anything hurry me or worry me in all honesty even though there is there was music playing around me and there were quite a few people below me and there was grass i never saw the depth the height i didn't see that all i saw with this was the solid yellow eye beam i didn't hear the people i was in a zone where i was focused on my heart rate being slow my brain Rave slowing down, being in a theta state, commanding all of my energy with laser-like focus for my goal. So I had to accept, believe, and surrender to that reality in order to make it to the other side without losing my balance and without falling. And oftentimes when we have an extreme, if, if, you've, ever, if you've ever been put in a position where you are in an impending accident or in the midst of an accident, you will find that oftentimes that same phenomena takes place where everything gets drowned out and then you, with laser-like focus, you hone in on 
whatever that specific thing is that you need to do so that you survive. And we have that to a certain degree going on right now in our world and we have it for an extended period of time. We're not having it for a moment in time, we're having it for days, weeks, months on end. And the reality is anytime we have any kind of adversity, we have no idea how long it's gonna take us to get out of this adversity. Nobody knows. If you've ever been hospitalized due, due to either a disease, uh, trauma, some sort of injury, um, you don't know. If you ever have had a high-risk pregnancy and you start with preterm later, labor, you don't know if that is going to last the, the balance of your pregnancy. Is it just a short-term thing, short-term phenomena that's gonna stop and then you're gonna resume with a normal pregnancy? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are faced with challenge and adversity I don't think anybody gets off scot-free off this planet in this journey that we call life with some sort of adversity, with some sort of obstacles that we have to change. And this, this is no different. So long story short, I get to the other side of the two by two and I felt fantastic once I get to the other side. But gosh, this is such a great, I'm so glad I went through that experience because this is just like life. Just as I got to that second platform and it was a two by two, I thought, I did it, I'm done. And that was short lived. <laughs> because when I got to that two by two, yeah, I made it safely across to the other side. And as I was rejoicing that I did it, that I was done, and I started to come off that high, and then I realized, how am I, how am I gonna get down from here? Because I didn't see any way, you couldn't see the ladder from that two by two, and I was just going, my brain couldn't compute how am I gonna get off this two by two? I had not seen, since I was one of the first ones, I didn't see anybody else get off the two by two. And even Tomas, who had been on that same very platform, since I got into the zone, I didn't see how he was able to get off the two by two. So now I have another unknown. So I luckily, you know, yes, I was, you know, I was quickly getting sobered and lost, you know, that moment of yes, joy, I did it to, oh boy, here I have to go again into making sure my heart rate's slow, my brain wave, I have to be in theta, slow down my breath, I need to keep this energy because now I gotta figure out how am I, get, how am I gonna get down? And then the person that was spotting me from below little guy he said um, I need you to walk about five to seven feet back onto the I-beam and I'm like what nobody told me this was part of the deal I'm like oh my god I already made it across and now I gotta walk why do I have to walk okay it's not my job to ask why I need to do what I'm instructed to do so I walked I took five, six, seven steps, and then when I got there, I'm facing him. We're going to assume that you're down below, uh, and the next thing I know, he says, okay, now I need you to, to turn around to do a 180, and I need you to face in the opposite direction. I need you to give your back to me, because if, you, if we repel you down from there, it's going to get your face, and you're going to get hurt. We can't have that. So you need to turn around. And I'm like, what? I'm like, why didn't you tell me that? I would have positioned myself so when I got out here, I go, it's impossible to do a 180. How am I supposed to hold my balance and do a 180 on this thin I And I'm like, stop arguing. Just do it. So that part of me that was going, that's impossible, I had to shut that down. That's my ego rearing its nasty little perversive, negative, energy-sucking, thief-like head at me. And so I said, shut up. And I had to then, again, no hurry, slow down my heart rate, keep it slow, keep my breath slow, 
remind myself that I'm commanding myself to stay into theta. I have no freaking idea. How am I going to turn, you know, do a 180 on an I beam, keep my balance. I'm like, I go, no, it's not impossible. It's possible. I wouldn't be asked to do it if it's not possible. This is possible. So to be honest with you, I did not take the time to visualize myself pirouetting gracefully around nothing. I just knew that it was possible and I was going to do it. And in all honesty, I don't know how I did it. I just know that I began to take motion and do it, but I have no recollection of how I actually did it. All I know is that before I knew it, I was now facing, I didn't lose my balance. I didn't lose my footing. Uh, I must have done it gracefully because I remember being steady the entire time. And before I knew it, I was 180 facing in the right direction. So now, and I have a fear of falling. I don't like those, you know, some people like getting on rides and things like that where you jump off and you have that free falling thing. That's not me. I, I don't like that feeling. To me, that is like the most horrifying, petrifying thing that you can do. So now the instruction from the guy below is now you need to lean forward and you need to drop and trust that I'm going to catch you and, and I'll repel you down. All 50 feet ended up being, um, it's 50 feet down, but obviously the distance is long. I have no idea how many, what the distance is. And I thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> honestly, I would rather walk back from one side of the I beam, from one two by two to the other than have to jump from here. Cause that is, but I'm thinking, no, this is fine. This is safe. I'm in a controlled, safe environment. This is possible. They wouldn't ask me to do something that's not possible. So I went ahead and I, I did it. And then before you knew it, I land gracefully, softly on the grass. I'm like, I did it. And then I was euphoric again. I'm like, I did it. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Oh my gosh, I got this. This is it. Now, okay, you guys, I'm going to wave back to all you guys, but I wanted to just tell you that that experience has paid out like an infinite, like infinite spades, infinite aces for me since then, because I had to use that experience over and over and over. In 2019, not knowing that we were going to be facing this, I had challenge after adversity, after not only fine tuning my intuition, but oh my gosh, I kept on, get, you know, getting into jams and just bizarre situations that didn't make sense. Even though I followed really specific safety precautions, it was crazy the amount of things that would go wrong. And I had to go back and in the moment, instead of freaking out, which is what everybody else does, go, no, I got this. I'm gonna slow my heart rate down. I'm gonna slow my breath down. I'm gonna instruct my brain to go into theta state on the count of three. And I am going to figure this out and I'm going to focus all of my energy like a laser. I'm going to focus my attention on what it is that I want. I want this outcome, not what the 3D reality is showing me because this sucks. This is not good. This is scary. This is bizarre. This is whatever it is. I don't want that. So I'm taking my attention off that. That's what in, if you look at, I'll never forget the exact moment in time when I realized, you know, there's a scripture in the Bible in the Old Testament that says, you know, when someone does you harm, you know, to turn the other cheek. And I remember prior to this very specific moment in time when I clearly understood what that meant, I used to think it's like, oh yeah, if somebody slaps you on, the, you know, the left side to turn the other cheek so that they slap you on the right side. That's not what it means, ladies and gentlemen, not at all. What that is trying to tell you is that when you're looking in this direction and you see garbage, crap, unwanted, scary, traumatic, yucky stuff, you know what? Turn the other cheek 180 degrees. Oh my gosh, that's so much more beautiful. 
I'm focusing my time, my attention, my energy now to what I do want. And so when you realize that if you take your awareness, your focus, your energy, and you bring that into meditation, doesn't matter if your eyes are opened or if they're closed. If you use meditation, if you use prayer, a contemplative mode, and you add an elevated emotion of gratitude, appreciation, of love, knowing that that end result that you want, now you're amplifying it with the vibration of love that's coming from your heart. And as you expand that energy, and then you let it go, and you'll know at the point in time during that process, when now it's like it's done, you can let it go. Then you let it go. And once you let it go, you know it's done. And then you're still coming off of that vibration of love, just unconditional, pure, untainted love, knowing that you've connected with your creator. You've connected with the divine, with the universe, with God Almighty and that you are one with him, he is one with you. You are made in his perfect image. Now, you don't know, the big surprise is, you don't know when it's going to pop into this 3D reality, but you know it's coming. You know that the order's in and you're like, ah, gratitude is the ultimate state of receivership because it's what magnifies and pulls it in. And so you have to surrender knowing it's like, I have no idea how long this is going to take. It doesn't matter because right now I'm feeling so much love. I'm feeling so much joy being in this place. I want to share this with everybody. And what's crazy is that the manifestations happen not not only so unexpectedly but they happen pretty quick but the key is you can't be attached to having them manifest and having them happen before you i really believe that this global adversity this this manifestation that has come forth where there isn't any culture, there isn't any country, there isn't any group of people that is exempt from this has come to help us reset our, ourselves internally. I can't tell you the number of, of, of people who, not only in phone calls, but also through Facebook postings, are like, oh my gosh, you know, you know, what am I gonna do now? And it's like, oh, how do you, how do, you do something as simple as dating? How do you do dating during this type of environment? I'm like, are you kidding me? To me, it seems so obvious. And I think whatever it is that seems obvious to you, I think sometimes we have to share that with others to, to I don't wanna say enlighten because that sounds pompous, but to bring light to the fact that we had so many other opportunities. Our grandparents did not have cell phones. They didn't have iPads. They didn't have laptops. They didn't have the internet. In fact, you know, my grandfather was one of the first guys in his town to buy a radio and people would come to his home, to my dad's home. You know, my grandfather had seven kids, plus my grandmother raised two others. And a lot of people in the community would come and listen to the radio in their home because he bought the first radio. And the same thing when TVs came to be. He was the first one to buy a TV. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have any of those impediments. So what? You can't meet with somebody in person? You know what? Maybe you shouldn't be meeting with anybody in person right now. Maybe you should be taking time to get to know yourself and them, whoever you're interested in. Maybe have a daily conversation. Get to know them. Get to see if you and them have enough things in common, see if there's a connection that warrants you guys spending time in person when the quarantine's up. Imagine that. How about a video call? Maybe you can up it from texting and phone calling and up it now to a video call. As you get to 
know this other person and ask questions, learn about them and their lives and what makes them tick, what motivates them. Just get to know the essence of who they are. Imagine that. Imagine putting pen to paper, writing them a personal note, writing them a letter. That's our grandparents had, you know, eventually came the point in time where they had phones and then they had love letters. You would have to wait weeks at a time to receive a letter and then respond to that letter. This is like a lost art. You know, the beauty of that is like, oh my gosh, what an incredible opportunity we have to text, call, write, video call. Imagine that. Uh, and there's so many things that we can, that we can do now, uh, aside from taking time to love ourselves enough to know, you know what, maybe you've never prayed before, maybe you've never meditated before. Did you know that meditation means quite literally to know thyself? That's all it is, to know yourself. And let me dispel the notion that meditation means that you will have no thoughts whatsoever in your mind. No, that's not true. You can do a meditation with no thoughts in your mind that will just give you a profound sense of, of, of bliss and of peace and a certain centeredness. That's one type of meditation. But there's another type of meditation where you guide your thoughts, your feelings and emotions and your energy to create a certain outcome. Like right now, pretty much all of the meditations that I've been doing for maybe the last month has been guided towards raising the vibration of love. I don't focus on eradicating the coronavirus. I don't focus on eradicating cancer, diabetes, any kind of neurological condition, any, any uh, trauma, any, no. You do it by raising the vibrational frequency within yourself and embracing the love and opening up your heart space and allowing yourself to feel that love that is divinely within you. So, you know, pe people who beat themselves up, that's your ego beating you up. You're not doing it right. What are you doing wrong? You, you know, that, that's, uh, that's something you don't want to give your energy to. So, there's so many things that you could be doing. Um, I was just talking to somebody the other day, and uh, two days ago, I think it was, and they said, oh, they had this great idea, this really, it's like the only first time that they had in their life this like huge epiphany, and um, they had this idea for this really fantastic book, and but they hadn't started writing it yet. I'm like, oh my gosh, how many of you have been thinking about writing books? Seriously. How many of you have thought, oh my gosh, I just don't have time? Guess what? You've been blessed with an inordinate amount of time. You have this respite, this retreat from your normal everyday habit. And now you can wake up in the morning. You can give your brain a command before you go to sleep at night and say, okay, tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up. I am going to get up joyous and I am going to start writing my book. And as I go to sleep tonight, I am going to trust you, God, that you are going to inspire me with however it is that you want me to start this book and just let it flow when I get up I want to put pen to paper I want to start my I want my fingers to just dance across the keyboard of my laptop or my desktop and get that book started there's no reason to wait you have plenty of time to get it done now over the next several weeks right 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 Write for, just intend to write for 15 minutes don't boggle yourself down oh I need to write for an hour I need to write for three hours nonsense just sit down and say, I'm gonna write for 15 minutes and check out what happens. You might be pleasantly surprised to see that you'll write for a lot longer than 15 minutes and it might flow a lot more fluidly than you anticipated. You guys, there are so many possibilities right now. You have an opportunity. Those of you who are in sales, oh my gosh, this is a golden opportunity for you guys. I used to teach and train my agents and brokers who worked for me when I had a mortgage bank and a real estate company, international brokerage five to stay alive. You can pick up the phone, call five people a day, just connect with them. Hey, I don't have a lot of time, but I just wanted to connect with you, see how you're doing. Wanted to see, um, I haven't talked to you in a while and I just wanted to connect you, you know, with, you know, I wanted to connect you heart to heart. You know, this, there's a lot of uh, unease 
and I hope that you are in a, in a good place and a good time right now and I just wanted to let you know I'm thinking about you and just wanted to say hi and you'd be surprised how many people go oh my gosh I haven't talked to you oh my gosh it's been eight years since actually somebody I just talked to I had been I think we figured out it's been like eight years since I've talked to him people be instead of waiting like a spider on a you know a spider's net instead of waiting like a on a web waiting for somebody to initiate something with you why 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 not you be that person that brings somebody joy where they'll be oh my gosh it's so good to hear from you and follow it up with a text and if you have it in you write them a personal note and say you know what it was so good to talk to you the other day let's not you know I promise not to let you take the responsibility don't put it on them to call you you take responsibility you be the change maker you be the catalyst that spreads joy you be the catalyst that spreads love if that's what you want more of in your life then you need to be the source of that that's it I just wanted to um, encourage you guys and if, if you know, maybe I'll, I'll put in this post a long list of all the different things that you can do. I had somebody who, um, actually on my Facebook, it was actually somebody who put, posted on my wall, you know, oh, what, what could you possibly do during this time of this quarantine? And I had a whole list of things. My gosh, you know, there's always, there's always how projects around the house that you have to do. There's always, you know, I'm in the midst, I happen to be one that's in the midst of writing a book, so I could always write my book. Oh, play instruments, play music. Um, hello, I did a video with my parents just the other day where uh, they live about an hour away from me. So I pulled out my flute and I put some music on and I started playing some songs for them. And they were so excited. My dad's like, oh, I thought you forgot how to play the flute and blah, blah, blah. So anyhow, I'm gonna finish up now here. I'm gonna say, hi, Karen. Hi, Michelle, I'm gonna wave back. Oh, Paul Gomez, Diane Anderson, Kara, Kara, Ron, Jan, oh my gosh, Jan used to be, she was my one of my assistants way back when. Okay, you guys, this is it. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for tuning in, tapping in, turn on, turning on here. And if you have any comments about this, I would love to hear back from you guys. And if you guys are suffering pain, I would encourage you to check out my neuro health reset because in less than three minutes you can eliminate your pain by just following those simple easy peasy instructions all right ciao for now